so uh, to develop these guidelines, the next and final edition of the playbooks will be published sometime in June. And of course, it was very pleasing to see the support from the WHO for the actions that we're taking, both ourselves and the organisers, uh, over the weekend. And then the third issue was the Olympic torch relay. Uh, it's nearly halfway through. Over 4,000 torchbearers have carried the flame. Uh, it's passed through 22 prefectures. It continues to adapt to local health authority restrictions, as you've seen, some parts of it on uh, public roads, others in secure settings, but uh, continuing uh, to happen and continuing to get coverage in Japan. Uh, and then the third uh, item on Tokyo was qualification. Again, some very good figures there for you. Uh, more than 7,800 athletes have already secured uh, their berths for Tokyo 2020. 70% uh, of the quota places have been allocated. Uh, qualification has finished in a number of sports and disciplines. Uh, among those, diving, equestrian, uh, football, handball, hockey, sport climbing, volleyball and water polo, wrestling, uh, and disciplines track cycling and road cycling have all finished their qualifications now. Uh, more than 260 major events have been successfully organized by uh, IFs in the five continents around the world since September, 20 in the past two weeks, with a cumulative participation of some, in fact, more than 40,000 elite athletes. Uh, international competitions have returned across all sports. Uh, of the places that still remain to be filled, um, so that's the 30% that's left, 20% will be allocated via rankings and only 10% uh, via the remaining qualification events. And the qualification deadline is the 29th of June. Uh, the other major item in the uh, executive board was uh, the Olympic Agenda 2020 plus five implementation, uh, only approved two months ago. Um, we're now already in implementation phase uh, and different initiatives were discussed today. Uh, I won't go through them all, but we have two examples in the area of sustainability and gender equality, which I think are worth touching on. Uh, in sustainability, as you know, we're already a carbon neutral organization uh, and will become climate positive in 2024. Uh, that means removing more carbon emissions from the atmosphere than we emit. And this will involve reducing the IOC's emissions by 45% by 2030 and creating an Olympic forest uh, to offset more than 100% of the IOC's unavoidable emissions. Uh, the Olympic forest will contribute to the UN-backed Great Wall Project in Africa, it's in the Sahara region, uh, running across the continent. It will compensate more than the IOC's projected 2021-2024 carbon footprint. Uh, the Olympic Forest will follow uh, tree planting best practice and will have a strong social component, will boost local communities' food security and help communities to adapt uh, to the consequences of climate change. And the project is just about to kick off, so we should have some very positive news on further implementation there. Uh, the IOC will also accelerate the transition to climate positive Olympic Games, with all Olympic Games required to be climate positive by 2030. Until then, host cities, including Tokyo and Beijing, have committed to holding games that are carbon neutral, while Paris 24 has recently announced its ambition to stage the first climate positive games. Uh, the second part of implementation of Olympic Agenda 2020 plus five, gender equality and inclusion on the field of play. As you know, substantial progress made under Olympic Agenda 2020. Tokyo will be the first gender equal games. Paris will be full gender balance with the same number of female and male athletes at the games. We're now turning our focus uh, on gender equality within the athletes entourage and specifically to coaching, to coaches. On average at the moment, only 10% of accredited coaches are women. So the objectives for 21 to 24 include the development of an action plan uh, in collaboration with the IFs and the NOCs for more female coaches to be eligible and selected to participate at World Championships and Olympic Games. Uh, as an organization, as you know, and just let me remind you, the IOC is leading by example. Uh, female IOC membership stands now approaching 40% at 37.5%, up from 21% at the beginning of Olympic Agenda 2020. So if anyone ever asks you what we've achieved under Olympic Agenda 2020, I think that's a very, very good and concrete example, nearly doubled uh, female participation in IOC membership. 
Uh, on the IOC executive board, female representation is now at 33.3% versus 26 uh, at the beginning. So again, another significant increase. And I think probably the most um, impressive uh, increase in gender representation uh, is for members of IOC commissions, now stands at 47.8, so to all intents and purposes, 50-50. With um, and that figure was 20% at the beginning of Olympic Agenda 2020. So another good story to tell if you're looking for good stories from Olympic Agenda 2020. We're now taking the next steps in promoting gender equality and inclusion by including uh, the Olympic movement to follow its lead. We're asking them to follow our lead. Uh, and new uh, objectives will focus on accelerating the trend within NOCs, IFs and organizing committees, encouraging them to strive to uh, for gender-balanced uh, representation in their games leadership roles and decision-making bodies. Uh, we also discussed uh, safeguarding and mental health, and I know when we see bad stories, this is something that um, you quite rightly report on, so I think it's important to bring you up to date with where we are and the initiatives that we're taking on that. Two important and tangible initiatives uh, aimed to further protect the physical and mental well-being of athletes were discussed. Uh, the IOC Safe Sport Action Plan and the Mental Health in Elite Athletes Toolkit. Both initiatives are practical implementations already of Olympic Agenda 2020 plus five. Uh, for the Safe Sport Action Plan, there are six objectives. I'll run through them very quickly. Uh, implement the International Safeguarding Officer in sports, uh, in sports Certificate. Support the implementation of safeguarding policies and procedures amongst all our stakeholders. Encourage Olympic movement constituents to establish a safeguarding officer position within their organization and to fill such a position with an officer certified through the International Safeguarding Officer in Sports Certificate. Uh, to support, uh, number four, to support NOCs through Olympic solidarity to deliver safeguarding education for their national stakeholders, uh, athletes and entourage through webinars, courses, international scholarships. Ensure the consideration for the safeguarding of athletes are included at every stage of the life cycle of the Olympic Games and the Youth Olympic Games. And finally, to promote the values of safe sport among athletes and the entourage in entourage at the Olympic Games and Youth Olympic Games. And obviously, as I say, when, those, when issues around this arise, they are correctly reported. It's good to know that we're doing something and we're happy to share more detail on those with you uh, should you want. Uh, and to, to implement those, uh, we will have an IOC safe sport unit, which will be established within the IOC medical and scientific department. An IOC mental health in elite athlete toolkit has been developed to assist Olympic movement stakeholders to develop and implement initiatives related to the protection and promotion of mental health and well-being in elite athletes. Uh, it supports and complements the information related to mental health and well-being already available to athletes through the IOC's uh, Athlete 365 Mentally Fit campaign. That can be found on the Athlete 365 uh, community. One final thing just to bring you up to date with, um, interesting for some of you, will be the changes of nationality. Uh, the EB today approved changes of nationalities for two athletes. Uh, Tyler Page, Mr. Tyler Page in sailing from USA to American Samoa, and Ms. Vanessa James in figure skating from France to Canada. As usual, the EB granted the requested exemption to the three-year waiting period following approval by the International Federation and the respective NOCs, and thus confirmed their eligibility uh, to represent their countries uh, at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 subject, of course, to qualification, which, as we heard at the beginning, is very, very near, it's nearing its end um, very successfully. So that's a rundown of the main topics discussed today. Happy to take your questions. Um, so, Victoria. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, so just a quick reminder, to ask a question, please click raise your hand, then send request. And once your request has been approved by us, you can then click on continue, which is very important and then you will be able to ask your question at that point. Uh, so the very first question goes to Riotta Hasabe from Gigi Press. Riotta, your question, please. Uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, good evening. Uh, my question is uh, about uh, the schedule of the, uh, the President Park. Uh, he has cancelled the and this in public country. Uh, what did he want to tell to Japanese people during his visit? And is there any another 
a chance for him to visit Japan maybe in June. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for that question. Of course, uh, we noted and, and fully understood the decision by the Japanese government to extend the state of emergency. Uh, and of course, our thoughts we're, we are with uh, the Japanese people in, sol in solidarity with them. Uh, we had, as you know, been discussing a, a visit uh, in May, uh, plans to visit Tokyo and visit the Olympic torch uh, relay in uh, Hiroshima. Given the, state, the extension of the emergency uh, regulations, we have, uh, with regret, decided to postpone that, um, and we hope that we will be able to discuss uh, something further into the future uh, once the state of emergency is lifted. The President, I think, wanted to just uh, convey our full support and understanding to the Japanese people. It's a very difficult time. Uh, for everyone, and, and, and obviously the eyes of the world are on, on Japan, so he wanted to do that, and obviously also to bring uh, them up to speed uh, with all the latest figures on qualification and so on, which I think are very important, uh, and, and purely, really, mainly to show solidarity, which at this time is, is kind of a very, very important uh, Olympic uh, value. Thank you very much. Um, next question uh, goes to Andrew Theo from Sports Business. Andrew. Hi there, Mark. Um, Hello. Given the, given that could be, um, can you hear me, sorry? Yes, I can hear you, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, given there could be devastating consequences for the international federation funding as well as funding for the NOCs and athletes, if the games are cancelled, um, I just wondered if the IOC had started to consider the potential financial implications of the games don't take place. Um, and second to that, what amount of insurance cover is there for federations and committees? Thanks. Hi. Yeah, I mean, we are now very much in an implementation phase. We're, I think, 78 days left before the games now. Um, so we're fully, fully concentrated on delivering the games. You'll have seen uh, by my very long, I kind of make no apology for it because I think it was very important information. You'll have seen the detail for qualification and the number of international events that are taking place around the world and the number of test events uh, that have already taken place in Tokyo. Uh, so we are concentrated uh, on that. Of course, the IOC, like all organizations, uh, has its insurance policies and so on, but I'm, you'll understand that we wouldn't really discuss the, the details of those uh, in, in a press conference, but rest assured we do have those. But we are fully, fully concentrated now in this last implementation phase of delivering uh, excellent games, which, which really will bring the world together, which really will mark a moment, I think, uh, and something that we're all looking forward to. There are a lot of sporting events going on around the world now, and I think this one will be the kind of the real tentpole moment that will bring the world together. For our third question, we can go to Ed Huller from Around the Rings. Hi, Ed. How are you? Good afternoon, Mark. How are you? Very well, thank you. All the better for seeing you, Ed. Yeah, good to see you. Um, given that we're operating under a state of emergency right now in Tokyo for the, for the COVID, what's the discussion in the IOC executive board today about additional states of emergency and where is the, the red line, if you will, that you couldn't have the Olympics under a state of emergency? Can you have the Olympics under a state of emergency? And how close to the games are you now being advised to uh, be on the lookout for, for something like that by the Japanese government? Is it on? No. Is my microphone now on? I can hear you. Sorry, do now you hear me? Hear you. Now I can hear you. Yeah, let me let me start again. Uh, there's a lot of speculation involved there, Ed. And as I said just now, you know, with 70 odd days to go, we are really stuck in the implementation phase. We're not stuck. We are looking as things stand at the moment, and as we talk to our Japanese partners and friends, we are moving full ahead. Uh, there has been a small extension of the emergency situation, but we continue to plan for full games, and that's that's the way it has to be, and that's the only way it can be for us. Um, and everything is telling us from the test events to international events that the games 
can go ahead and will go ahead. Uh, and incidentally, I note uh, in Atlanta that you had uh, baseball at the weekend with full stadiums, 40,000, I think, um, showing, uh, showing that these, these things are certainly possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for our fourth question, we can go to Graham Dunbar for Associated Press. Hello, Graham. Good afternoon. Hello. Hello, Hello Mark. Um, can I just ask about the, um, the public opinion surveyed in, in uh, Tokyo, which seems like, you know, stubbornly high in favor of cancellation. Do you trust the methodology of those surveys? Is there a number that could get so high, alarmingly high, that it might have to affect your decision making? Or is public opinion just you, is it something you just can't factor in this late in the implementation phase? Look, I'm, I'm not going to comment on, on polls of which I haven't seen and I don't know the, the kind of or haven't seen how they're being conducted and I'm not certainly not going to give you a headline saying that I distrust them or mistrust them. So they are what they are. We obviously do our own polling. Uh, as you know, these are very specific times and very different uh, moment to normal. But as you know, there's always a dip uh, ahead of the games quite often. Um, so we, we take note of them. We take note of public opinion. Um, and we think that at this stage the games can go ahead and I think that you will see when they do go ahead and when there is an amazing moment that that will uh, be reflected in, in public opinion in general. As with, with all organisations, we have to pay attention to public opinion but not be totally driven by it. What does your own polling say? Can you share any of those findings? Uh, I don't have it to hand, no, but I, I don't think we've got any recent polling here. It would be more by the organising committee, I'd imagine. But um, we, are, we are confident that we can deliver good games and we will continue working towards that. Now we can head back to Japan with uh, Wakako Yuki for the Yomiuri Shinbun. Hello, Wakako. Hello, Mark. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Just, just a few things. Um, related, actually, um, it seems that among Japanese, among people are uh, with, uh, even after the playbook, uh, second version issuance, um, are concerned of the safety and um, um, under today's climate uh, of a pandemic. Um, it seems that people's concerns are not going anywhere. So um, can you share with us how difficult it is for you to uh, ass give assurance to satisfy people's understanding? Uh, and what are the things that you may be able to uh, do to follow it up? Also, one um, related issue was that Recent, there is a bit of controversy uh, involving uh, Risako Ike, the swimmer who uh, overcame leukemia. Um, her SNS had an uh, entry uh, saying that um, um, we want you to withdraw from the games uh, to attest to the, the anti Tokyo Games um, sentiment. Um, what is wrong with this picture? Uh, are you concerned that athletes could be involved? Uh, with these kind of trend uh, against Tokyo Games. So, I mean, I, th I think in, in terms of uh, Japan and Tokyo, we understand the caution of people and we are fully, uh, as I said in my introductory remarks, we're fully in solidarity with them. We understand that these are tough times. Uh, and we understand that people are very cautious. We hope and trust in the, in the Japanese authorities and we think that they are uh, you will know more more than I do, but they are they have plans and they're working on it. We, for our part, for the games, uh, have delivered a very good plan it, along with the organising committee, with the playbooks, with our other stakeholders to provide safe and secure games. Uh, and the figures, the kind of figures and the events that we run through, that I ran through earlier on with test events in in Tokyo and Japan, I hope and I I think they should give. Uh, Japanese people confidence that these games can be held in a very safe and secure way. As for social media and as for, uh, we, we know that social media, quite apart from 
what's happening around these games is always a very difficult place to be and you find uh, extreme opinions there. What I will say is that a lot of athletes uh, are really concentrated on the games, uh, are really looking forward to the games and expressed uh, that. Of course, they have caution as well. I've read one or two interviews where people uh, uh, are cautious, uh, but the, the huge majority of, of views that I've seen expressed by, by athletes, uh, by, by the, those qualified for the games, is that they're looking forward to the games and they think they can be safe and secure. And I think that hopefully will give also the Japanese people some confidence. But I think, you know, for the, for the Japanese people, it's for them uh, and their government, uh, they need to have confidence in them. All I can say is that from our side, from the IOC side, from the organizing committee side, we are doing absolutely everything we can with all of the, uh, all the great experience that we have, but also from the WHO. And you will have seen at the weekend that the WHO came out with some very, very strong uh, messages of confidence in the work that we're doing and in the playbooks that they uh, endorsed as, as, as being uh, endorsed, but, but had confidence in as being uh, very professionally and scientifically put together. I hope that that WHO uh, finding and, rep uh, uh, and confidence will also give uh, the Japanese people confidence. But of course, we understand everyone has caution around the world uh, with their situation, but I think you know, you can't look higher in terms of uh, health authority than the WHO to give you some confidence that what is being done uh, and what will be done is the very best. Now we can head over to uh, Liam Morgan from Inside the Games. Uh, over to you, Liam. Hello, Mark. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you, Liam. I hope all is well in Lausanne. Uh, on the vaccine uh, deal that you, uh, that you struck last week, um, how would the IOC respond to criticism that, that this basically means that athletes will jump the queue uh, for vaccines, which you've always said the athletes won't do, especially in countries with low vaccine rate, vaccination rates like Japan, for example? And quickly on qualification, is there any specific help the IOC is providing to Indian athletes? Um, who are unable to travel to qualifying events because of the, obviously the ongoing crisis in, in India. Thank you. Yeah, so on the uh, Pfizer deal, we made it clear, as you've seen in the press release, that the, these are um, doses on top of uh, those within the um, programs of countries and that all of the offers that we're making must fit into the programs of those countries. So those countries must be... Um, must be content with what we're doing. And I think you've seen uh, away from the whole Pfizer thing, we've seen a number of cases where in any case this has been happened. So we are reasonably confident. I think also, by the way, that it does have, uh, it does have the added benefit also of um, a health campaign showing that athletes are leading the way in helping to get people uh, vaccinated. And I think that's a very, very important message and one that shouldn't be um, under, underestimated. As for India, I know that there is um, some help um, going on with the National Olympic Committee, but I don't have the details on that. Um, I, I will try to get you something. But um, clearly, uh, it's a, it, there are 206 National Olympic Committees, and we're working uh, with different ones in different ways. But I, I do know that we are trying to help particularly those uh, that are having kind of the toughest times. This next question is to Carolus Groman from Reuters. Your question, please, Carolus. Hi. Good afternoon, Mark. Can you see? Me? Can you hear me? Hi, Carlos. Yeah, I, uh, I can hear you anyway. So I can't see. The camera is not working for some reason. Anyway, I'll just push on. If I can uh, just ask a question on that, um, on the public public sentiment. I mean, at this stage, normally, even if the Olympics are in, in trouble, let's say financial problems or whatever, if you look at Rio or if you look uh, before that uh, to, to other Olympic Games. But there was always also this, this phase of shoring up enthusiasm in the host nation. Uh, in this case, you're, uh, you're in a position where you're trying to contain potential negative damage from, from, the, from COVID for the Games. How difficult it is, is it for the IOC? To, to plan for the games, but also to have a, a country where you do not have full uh, support for, for the Olympics that are only uh, less than three months away. Thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Well, I mean, 
public opinion and, and polling does does change quite radically. And in these current circumstances, I think you, you will see swings. Uh, certainly a swing from, from seven years, uh, eight years ago when, when uh, Tokyo was chosen. And we know that the games then were incredibly uh, popular and the, Chi and the Japanese people were really keen to host those games. Yes, there will be ups and downs, and we understand the, the kind of problems that, 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 that they're seeing there that will affect public opinion. Um, but I think in the end, what we have to do is, is take uh, account of public opinion, uh, but over, over a longer term and, and try to see uh, what the people will want. And I think, as I said to an earlier question, when the games happen and when, Japanese, when the Japanese people can be the proud uh, hosts of an event which really will uh, be, it's an overused word, but really will be an historic moment bringing the world together after uh, this, this terrible moment. I think uh, I'm very confident that, there, that we will see public opinion hugely in favor of the game. So, of course, we pay attention to these things, and of course we, we, um, we, we must do, but I think we need to keep now, with 78 days to go, we need to keep our eyes uh, very much on, on what will eventually be, I think, a, a key moment uh, for the world and for the Japanese people who will be very proud to have been able to host it, I think. Now we can go to sorry. Now we can go to Marina Schweitzer from Deutschlandfunk. Marina. Hello, Marina. Hello, I, we can see you, but we can't hear you. I still, we, should we go to someone else and then try, uh, can we, we'll come back to you after this and we'll try again. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we can go now to NHK, uh, Nozomi Kunitake, sorry. Over to you, Nozomi. Hello, Mark, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. I can see you as well now. Hi. Hello. Um, my question is that um, the IOC already estimated the, uh, the percentage of the athletes who will be vaccinated by the Tokyo Olympic Games. Um, we're, we're working flat out to, to, to try to help as many athletes who wish to be to be uh, vaccinated. What I can tell you, I can't put an exact figure on it, but what I can tell you uh, is that we estimate that the a large majority of those in the Olympic Village will be vaccinated. And I think that's a very clear message uh, also for the Japanese people that they will know that not just the athletes, but all those uh, entourage support people who have to be in the Village too, uh, we'll, we, we think a large, we know a large proportion uh, will be vaccinated. Um, I won't give you a figure, but I, uh, it, it's, it's a large and growing number. Okay, thank you. So we can now go over to uh, Masashi Inui for uh, Kyodo News. Masashi? Hello. Hi, Mark. Masashi. Hi, hello. Um, Greetings to Geneva. Uh, uh, yes, I'm in Geneva. Um, could you explain why today uh, President Bach is not attending this uh, press conference? Because uh, I think it's unusual, and uh, I was expecting him to attend today as uh, you know this, spe especially this uh, very important moment, important period for uh, Tokyo Games. And second question is about uh, President Bach schedule in June. Uh, is he attending a group of seven leaders summit in UK uh, in mid-June? Thank you. So, so firstly, I'm obviously very disappointed, uh, Masashi, that you, you'd rather see the president than me. Um, but joking aside, I, I, no, I, I, I totally get it. I mean, as you know, uh, executive board meetings have been very, very much more regular than in the past, and, and because of the current situation and it being uh, online, 
uh, and the president has been at all of them. Uh, this one we didn't plan to because it was also expected to be a very, very short executive board with really just reports. There weren't actually very many decisions. In fact, I'm looking around, I think really the only main decision was the change of nationality. Uh, so I'm afraid they decided to bring me off the subs bench and I, I apologize for that. But um, uh, if you don't like my answers, then then I, I'll go and ask the president. Yeah, yeah. But I but but th there's nothing uh, there's nothing more than that to it at this stage. And he will be here. We have another executive board in June, and he will be uh, uh, doing the press conference then. So uh, you can get back to your favourite uh, presenter. How about the, the, the uh, uh, yeah, I, I understand not. Um, I don't think so. I mean, as you know, we have taken part um, by video uh, in previous occasions uh, and in person, uh, one before, if I remember rightly. But I think for this one, uh, for obvious reasons, being just ahead of the games, I, I think we probably will not be taking part. If that changes, I'll let you know. But there are no plans at the moment. Thank you. I'm glad to see you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you too. Uh, do you want to go back to... Um, yeah, um, in fact, we've answered the question from Deutschland. Okay. And she's, she's told us that it's been already answered okay. by you, so perfect. Uh, we can perhaps do one last question yep. from uh, Yahoo. Um, Brian, I'm sorry, if not of the surname. Brian, uh, David O'Brien, sorry. David O'Brien, your question, please. Ah. No Olympics anywhere. No Olympics anywhere. Fuck the Olympics. We don't want the Olympics anywhere. You just turn him off. That would no be Olympics raised to government. Not, no. no Olympics in Tokyo. Thank you. Uh, and, and on that, that great note, I'm sorry to disappoint you that uh, it was me, not the president uh, today. Um, obviously would have um, probably made that stunt a little bit more interesting. Uh, I'm used to it, so that's fine. Um, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, as ever, if you have more questions, we're happy to receive them. Most of the information is, is online otherwise, but uh, otherwise, uh, look forward to seeing you at the next event, uh, at the next uh, press conference, and of course, look forward to seeing many of you uh, at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, which begin and will begin on the 23rd of July. We'll be, be there before that, and I hope to see many of you there. So thank you very much, and goodbye. Recording has stopped.